rough day. Layla, I've gotten myself into a mess that I don't know how to get out of. What happened? During class, Mrs. Jones had me deliver some papers to the front office. On the way there, I saw some of the older kids totally destroying the cafeteria. They were dumping out trash cans on the lunch tables, pouring milk cartons all over the ground, just making the biggest mess. Why would they do that? I have no idea. But then they saw that I caught them red-handed. They warned me not to tell anyone. And what's even worse is that they pinned the blame on my two best friends, Gray and Noah. Gray and Noah would never do a thing like that. I know, but I'm afraid to speak up. Everyone believes these cool kids. But if I tell the truth, I know people are going to be mad at me. I think I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Come on, Leo. You can't do that. Let's use the history app to meet someone who told the truth even when it was hard to. Good heavens, what on earth did I just witness? So sorry if we scared you, sir. My name is Leo, and this is my sister Layla. We've time traveled from the future. Fascinating. Uh, this is my first time ever meeting time traveling children. Uh, what a momentous day for me as a scientist. Uh, my name is Michael Faraday. Uh, welcome to my lab. Nice to meet you, Mr. Faraday. Your lab is full of so many neat things. What kind of a scientist are you? I have spent the majority of my career studying chemistry and electricity. It's been quite shocking, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Mr. Faraday. Is it true that every electrician's favorite ice cream flavor is shock a lot? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but we have to make sure not to eat it too fast. Brain freeze really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wait until I tell your joke to my friends. It'll really spark their interest. <laughs> I can keep going. How about you not? <laughs> Rude. Okay, fine. Mr. Faraday, what are you working on? Uh, lately, I've been studying electromagnetism. Electromagna, huh? What's that? An electromagnet is a type of magnet that is created by an electrical current. A scientist by the name of Hans Christian Orsted observed it in action for the first time when he saw a needle of a magnetic compass move when it was put near an electrical wire with a current moving through it. Is it like the magnets we use on our fridge or in my locker at school? <laughs> Not quite. It's a type of magnet whose magnetic field is caused by the flow of electrical current from an electrical source. It is different from permanent magnets like the ones you mentioned because a permanent magnet strength cannot be changed. An electromagnet strength can be altered by changing the amount of current flowing through it. What's that mean? That means the more electrical current you pump into the electromagnet, the stronger it would be. That makes sense. The more electricity, the more powerful the magnet. Precisely. Now I'm working on how I can use electromagnets in different ways. I'm on the verge of something big with prototypes for an electric motor and generator. We'll see where that leads me. Well, keep going, Mr. Faraday. I think you're really onto something. Why, thank you, little chap. I appreciate the encouragement. The work I'm doing is important. It's turning electricity from a far-off idea into a tangible everyday technology that people can use. I only wish that other scientists could see it that way. What do you mean? Well, with my new investigations, I'm challenging well-known and established scientific theories. Isn't that a good thing? Of course it is. That's what science is all about. <laughs> but with that comes a lot of hostility from other scientists of my time. They're mean to you. For what? Sharing your findings? It doesn't make sense, does it? But what I want them to understand is that with more advances in technology, our methods of investigating and experimenting are also becoming more advanced. Theories that were once thought to be true are now being disproven or updated, and our understanding of the natural world continues to grow. And I need to share that with everyone. I'm sorry other scientists aren't listening to you, Mr. Faraday. You would think all scientists would have the same goal to discover the truth. One would think. I think I'm seeing why the app brought us here. We came to learn about speaking up about the truth, even when it's not easy. Mr. Faraday, my brother witnessed some kids doing something bad at his school, but he's afraid to speak up and tell the truth about it. Hmm. Why do you think that is, Leo? Well, kind of like you said earlier about people giving you a hard time. It's easier just to stay quiet than it is to speak up. But Leo, what's more important? People being upset with you for a little bit or for people to know the truth? For me, 
the truth should always win. But I hate when people are mad at me. It makes me feel icky. But people getting mad at us for telling the truth? That's something that still perplexes me. We cannot let other people's reactions stop us. It is my duty as a scientist to share whatever I discover about the natural world. But more importantly, it is my duty as a Christian to reveal that the natural world was created by God, that it is ordered according to laws, and that the human mind is capable of discovery. But where do you even start? I publish my findings as soon as I can. I also hold public lectures even for children as young as you to come and listen to my latest scientific discoveries. The masses are so wonderfully curious about the world around them. I get so excited to share what I've learned and can only hope my enthusiasm excites them too. That's so different from what science is becoming in the future. There's been so much stuff on the news about some scientists who want a certain result and then do an experiment that will only give them the result they want. Some scientists even hide things that might prevent them from getting funding. It all seems really... Wrong. That's what's being done in the future? That does sound incredibly unethical and not at all like what true scientists should be doing. They should be reporting on their findings, not concealing what they've learned out of fear or pressure. <sighs> Leo, that's why society needs people like you and me. Like you and me? Yes, the world needs truth tellers. Whether it be something that happened at school or the latest scientific discovery that goes against what the majority wants you to believe, we must stand firm even when it seems that everyone else is against us. Well, if you can do it, I think I can try to speak up too. I believe in you, Leo. Mr. Faraday, I'm so happy we got to meet you today. Thank you for teaching us about your work and for teaching my brother to tell the truth, even when it's not the easiest thing to do. My pleasure, Layla. Safe travels and good luck, Leo. You too, Mr. Faraday. Bye. Hey, Leo. How did today go? It went way better than I thought. Thanks to our visit with Mr. Faraday and learning about him always wanting to share the truth, I told Mrs. Jones what actually happened in the cafeteria. And? The cool kids got so mad at me for ratting them out. But in the end, I know I did the right thing. They can be mad at me all they want. I couldn't stay quiet and let Gray and Noah take the fall for something they would never do. And just like Mr. Faraday, I knew the truth had to be told, no matter what the blowback might be. I'm so proud of you, Leo. You did do the right thing. Thanks, Layla. Hey, by the way, do you think Mr. Faraday's electric motor was used in every electrician's favorite car? The Volts wagon? <laughs> If you liked time traveling with Leo and Layla, watch more of their adventures at PragerUKids.com. And parents, don't forget to subscribe.